G'day, Wes. How are you? I'm very good. Merry Christmas. What can I help you with? You too. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, so, Wes, I wanted to ask you, I've got a new uh, idea of a new stream for my business, photography business. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's it's quite different to what I'm currently doing. And I just wondered the best way to structure that. So whether I have it as a uh, an arm to the existing business or whether I keep it as a as a separate entity in, of its own. Um, hmm. So I'm just sort of give pondering me a, that Give me a little bit more context of how, yeah, sure. how different so, it is. Yeah, so basically the, the current business that I have is um, it's basically professional headshots. Yep. Uh, people use for LinkedIn and that sort of thing. Yep. Um, Give us your URL. That, Where would somebody go to find out more? Uh, it's profilebooth.com.au. Right. Keep going. Thanks for the plug. Um, and, yeah, so basically uh, that's sort of corporate space, uh, professional headshots, event photography, uh, and business promotional. So that's the sort of sphere of, of where that business is at. And the new one? Um, and the other one is, um, it's, it's a, b- a bit different. So it's construction space. So working on um, progress uh, sort of photography. So for time-lapse time uh, photography big, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, look, it could include time-lapse, um, drone work. Yeah, yep, okay, um, got it, okay. And on, on-site progress Perfect. That sort of thing. So I want to answer your first question of, of what kind of entity and what kind of structure. Obviously, obviously that's not going to come under profile booth branding. No. Right? So that's going to be your whatever, you know, Chris's on-site photography, right? So it'll have its own yep. logo, its own website, right, and its own customers. It'll, th- that, that's yep. fine. But in terms of its entity, I would not put that under two entities. I would not go and right. set up another proprietary limited for the sake of that. And here's my reason why. Firstly, you do not need the additional $2,000 a year accounting or the 500, no. bu- the 500 bucks to set up a, 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 you know, a new company and trust and you know, whatever, the 1000 or 1500 a year in accounting fees to manage it. That, it, it doesn't yep. give you anything to spend that money, right? And yep. the other thing, of course, is you can spin it out at any stage. So you could run, and the other thing is, it's untested. So rather than invest in an entity mm-hmm. and then find out you don't like it after two years and you're going to close it down, is a waste of time. Bring it under the bring it yep. under the entity you've currently got. Different trading name, different logo, different everything, but bring it under that entity. If in twelve months it's flying and you really like it, then spin it out and put it over into a new entity. Right. The, so, the, the value of that business will be zero. So you won't have to pay stamp duty or anything like that. Probably. So just go and put it in another entity if you want to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you said to me, if you said to me, I'm going to start this other business and I'm going to sell it within, I'm just going to build it very quickly and punt it, I would say definitely put it in another entity because then you've isolated it for the new buyer. Yep. Like if you're going to quickly do a business for the sake of selling it, then you should probably spin it out from the start. But I think in your case, it's unnecessary. Just, just. Yeah, it's, that's not the that wouldn't be the aim. Yeah. Exactly. So just bring it all under the one umbrella. Like, it's not it's not more entrepreneurial to have more you know more 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 entities. Like it's it, it's unnecessary. Now there are times. So when you would you, do would you sorry? You go. I was just going to say. So would you would you link it? I'm, I know you're saying it's a different logo and a different um, business name. Would you sort of link them at all? Like cross platforms or you know what i mean you like, mean would i sell to each keep other's them completely databases? separate or like um from a website point of view like from profile booth website would i you know link across to this new only if you website think that or the just clients them... only if you think that the clients could cr- uh, definitely you definitely want to do that if you can make more money out of cross promotion definitely mm. so on this website no. you reference the other one on this website you reference the other one definitely yeah, Definitely. Yeah. We're going to put our hands around a more amount of money. That's brilliant. And, and by the way, you should do that whether it's going to one entity or two. That wouldn't matter. Like yeah. th- that's just a, yeah. a smart business decision to leverage the, you know, the relationships of both businesses. So, so definitely in the tactics of it, you know, cross-promote and cross-sell. But that doesn't, that doesn't change whether you should have one entity or two. Yeah, okay. So leave it as one entity and two trading as... Yeah. 
Yeah. And then when it becomes cool. its own thing and you want to de-risk, if one's got more risk than the other, spin it out. Yep. But that's a, you, you could make yep. that decision with one phone call to your accountant that says, hey, start another uh, proprietary limited uh, or stick this in a holding trust and, and then move it over there and let's get a valuation. The valuation is you know, $2,000, stamp duty is nothing, move it over, you know, and, uh, and off you go. Yeah. So the, I guess the only other thing is that currently I'm still under sole trader. Um, so I would need to restructure things in order to um, do what we're talking about. Would that be right? No. 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 You don't have to change anything for now. Just start another trading name. Yeah, I see. Yep, yep. Now, if you, get, if, you, if you want to spin it out, if you want to spin it out down the line, you could spin out the new business and still stay as a sole trader on the other side. Yeah, okay. I yep. mean, like, you obviously should seek, obviously, you know, advice because I don't know all of the situation here. But yep. if you have assets outside of your business, you probably shouldn't be a sole trader anyway because they are at risk. So, yep. you know, like a home or an investment property or something like that, like... If you have the, if you hold those things in your own name and then you're a sole trader, all of that stuff is potentially exposed. So at yeah. some po- at some yeah, point, I'm working through that stuff at the moment. At yeah. some point, you're going to want to change. You don't have to change from a sole trader, by the way. But if you but but you could move any real estate holdings you've got into a trust, <clears throat> um, yeah. and that would help you isolate them from a risk management perspective. But there, there are people far more uh, knowledgeable than I on how to structure and, and how to do things like that. That's, that, that's kind of like a, a bit of a basic understanding of how to do it. But, but I think for now, to answer your first question, just put them under the same business. If it, if it's a, if it becomes a thing, then, then, then move it. If it, if it doesn't, put them under the it. same business, yeah. but, but separate them online. Yeah, definitely. They're, they're a different identity. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Unless, of course, you yeah, wanted to I do think... something funky and instead of profile booth, profile site. Right, and then you could probably keep them. That's a, that's an interesting conversation. Keep the branding the same, but have a different identity. So you got profile, yeah, profile booth I have and profile thought, site, or you know, whatever, yeah. just to play on words. Well, one thing I have thought of because I really like the the profile booth logo, and one thing I have thought of is, for example, changing it to a black and white version of that logo and call it, say, PB Industrial or something like that, and have it as a separate arm of the business. Yeah, well, they're, they're probably so different that the market wouldn't work it out. So there's probably no benefit mm-hmm. to keeping them the same. You'd have to keep them very similar. So he, here's just a little thought for you, which I think is fun. There's, there's, diff, there's two ways you could go. A branded house and a house of brands. And let me explain the difference. Um, a branded house is where somebody owns a lot of businesses and they have the same flavor in their branding. All right. So look at the Virgin mm-hmm. Group. Virgin Megastores, Virgin Atlantic Airways, Virgin this, Virgin the Virgin Active Health Clubs, right? That's a branded yep. house because everything is branded. You take a company like Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's investment arm. It's, it's one company that owns Sears Candy, Coca-Cola, the Burlington Railway. It, they're all different businesses under one umbrella, okay? So that's a mm-hmm. house of brands or a branded house. So you could have three or four different businesses that all had different names and different logos and different feels. That would be a house of brands. Like mm-hmm. if you look at FedEx, FedEx actually have about 50 different logos and they all look about the same. Different colors, mm-hmm. but they all look about the same. So they're a, a branded house. So you can mm-hmm. go either way. There's, there's, no, there's no better way. Obviously, if you go branded house, you get the cross collateral, collateralization of the brand to help you do that. Um, but yep. the downside is when one doesn't work, it's a little bit harder to get rid of because it could tarnish the brand of the others. 